we introduced the simplest possible quantum system, a qubit state, and now we try to construct larger probability distributions or larger states, which, which are composed of several qubits. So before we go there, we have to introduce a new mathematical operation, the tensor product. So imagine that you have two quantum states, two cats. One has uh, probability amplitudes A0, A1, and the second one has B0 and B1. Now then we can define this tensor product as, as this object. So first you have A0 times B0 as a first component, and then you have A0 times B1, and A1, B0, and so on. So this is a, a four-dimensional complex vector. So these are independently two-dimensional complex vectors, and here you create a four-dimensional one. And now you can also look at that this probability distribution has four possible outcomes. And now we can create a basis in this space. So we can take our zero cat and uh, take the tensor product of the other zero cat. And the shorthand notation for this is just dropping the tensor product sign. And the neighbor shorter notation is, is by, by dropping um, the, the, the two uh, cats here and just contracting them into one. And if you calculate uh, this the product, then you end up with the first canonical basis vector of the four-dimensional space. You can do the same thing with 0 and 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and you, and you will notice that these, these are the four possibilities, the four canonical basis vectors in the four-dimensional complex space. And there's a very important convention that most uh, quantum computing libraries out there use, which is that it's the rightmost qubit which is the qubit zero. So this would be qubit zero, and then to the left of it would be qubit one, and so on and so forth. This is the same order of representing binary values as you would have in most digital computers, and that's why this convention is maintained in, uh, in these quantum computing frameworks. So these are called product states. But there are also states which cannot be written in this form, even though they live in the same space. So one example is the phi plus state. So it's written as an equal superposition of two basis vectors, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So it's definitely in the same space as our product vector, but it cannot be written as a product vector. And to see that, let's take a look at the general structure of this product vector. So I just copied the definition of, of the product vector here, and I, uh, I wrote it down in the canonical basis. So it would have A0 times B0 times the 0, 0 cat, and so on. It has four components. And let us assume that there is some combination of these AI and BJ values such that we can write this uh, phi plus state as a product state. So this means that in a here we have 0, 0 cat with a coefficient 1 over square root 2. So this equation must be fulfilled. Similarly, we have the 1, 1 cat with the same coefficient. So this condition must be fulfilled. Right? So we are looking at this and this part. And we also see that there is no 0, 1 and 1, 0, so the corresponding coefficient must be 0. But now, it means that either A0 or B1 must be 0. A0 cannot be 0 because it multiplies to some non-zero non value. But the same is true for B1. So therefore, this state, although it lives in the same space, cannot be written as a product state. Such states are called entangled states and they play a very important role in quantum computing together with interference. So these are the main quantum mechanical properties that we exploit in quantum calculations, as you will see in subsequent lectures.